Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be taking a look at the leak code question arithmetic slices. Alright, so let's first go over the question real quickly. So over here, a sequence of numbers is called arithmetic if it consists of at least three elements and if the difference between any two consecutive elements is the same. So there's two conditions. The difference between them has to be the same and there must be at least three elements, okay? So for example, in this we have 1, 3, and 5. Let's just see 1, 3, and 5. The difference between 1 and 3 is 2 and the difference between 3 and 5 is 2. So that is one condition and uh, we have a length of three, three elements. So that makes one, three, five an arithmetic sequence. Similarly, one, three, five, seven, nine is also an arithmetic sequence with a difference of two. And in this case, we have a total of five elements. So over here, this is also an arithmetic sequence. Over here, the difference is zero and we have more than three elements. And same thing over here, the difference is negative four. But over here, as you can see, the difference is not the same. The difference between one and one is zero, but the difference between one and two is one, and the difference between two and five is three, right? So the difference keeps changing, so that means it's not an arithmetic. And for example, if we, ha if we just have something like one and two, that is also not an arithmetic because we need a total, or sorry, a minimum of three elements, okay? Okay, so now that we understand what an arithmetic sequence is, let's just go to what the question actually is asking for. So in this case, uh, we have this area over here. We're going to be given an area A, and it has the values 1, 2, 3, and 4. So what we want to do is we want to see how many slices inside of this or parts of this entire area over here actually end up making an arithmetic sequence. Now, a part in this case could just be 1 and 2. But in this case, 1 and 2 cannot be an arithmetic sequence because like we saw, one of the conditions, we must have a minimum of three elements and the difference has to be the same. So in this case, one of the arithmetic sequence would be 1, 2, 3. So that's one arithmetic sequence. Another might be 2, 3, and 4. See, the difference is the same and the length is 3, right? That's the minimum requirement. And another arithmetic sequence is the entire thing 1, 2, 3, and 4, since the differences are the same and we have at least three elements in this. So these three are going to be the three arithmetic slices that we have, and we return the number of arithmetic slices that we can form. So now one thing we want to keep in mind is, so let's say in this, the first thing we're doing is we're looking at the first slice, which is 1, 2, and 3. Now we know for a fact the slice is going to be a length of 3 because we must need a minimum of three elements. Now in this case, what we can do is, we know that this over here is an arithmetic slice. So what we can do is we can kind of move over to 2, 3, and 4. So 2, 3, and 4 is also an arithmetic slice. So what that basically tells us is that we have 1, 2, 3, we have 2, 3, 4, and we also automatically have 1, 2, 3, 4 as a possible arithmetic sequence. Now the reason this makes sense is because in this case we had 1, 2, 3, and they all had the same difference. Now in this case, two of the elements are still there in our new slice of 2, 3, and 4. So that means if the difference here is same, it's going to be the exact same difference as the previous slice, which is 1, 2, 3. So essentially what I'm trying to say is, by just looking at the previous slice, we can come up with the total number of slices we have. So we have one of one, two, three, and we also have one of two, three, four. And since they're back to back, that means that the difference between them is going to be same. The total number of arithmetic slices we have is actually three. So one, two, three, two, three, four. And we also need to account for everything together, which in this case is one, two, three, and four. So to solve this, we're actually gonna take a dynamic programming approach because in this case, it is pretty important to look at the previous three elements to see whether or not those continue on as a possible arithmetic slice. So just to better understand what I'm trying to say, let's look at a demonstration of what this looks like. All right, so this over here is going to be our area A that we're considering for the question. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a dynamic programming area with the same number of elements as this, and they're going to be initialized with all the zeros in the beginning. So let's see what that looks like. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to always be looking at slices with a length of three. So in the beginning, the first slice that we're going to be looking at is going to consider the first three elements, which are one, two, and three. Now, the reason we're doing three is because an arithmetic sequence must have a minimum of three values, okay? So in this case, we have one, two, and three. And what we want to determine is as it stands, the values one, two, and three, does it make an arithmetic sequence? And the answer is yes. The difference between one and two is one, and the difference between two and three is one, and the difference is same, hence it is an arithmetic sequence. 
So in this condition, what we're going to end up doing is we're now going to assign a value of one inside of our dynamic programming array. So in this case, this over here is going to end up becoming one instead of zero. All right, perfect. So let's just keep going on and see what happens. So in this case, we're going to kind of move that three, the window of three by one to the right. So now we're going to be looking at this slice over here of two, three, and four. So now in this case, we want to check if it is an arithmetic sequence, and it is. 2, 3, the difference is 1, and 3, 4, the difference is 1. Now, one thing you want to notice is we know for a fact because this over here has come right after the previous sequence. So that automatically tells us that currently at this point, it's going to have the same difference because in the previous thing, we had the elements 2, 3, and we still have the elements 2, 3. So for it to be an arithmetic sequence, the elements, the difference is going to be exactly the same. So in this case, the difference is also 1, and it is an arithmetic. But now what we're going to end up doing is in our dynamic programming array, we're going to be making this a value of 2. Now, the reason this has a value of 2 over here is because we go to the previous element, which in this case is 1, and we're going to add 1 to it. So this has a value of 2. Now, why exactly is that? So the answer to that is pretty simple. The first slice is 1, 2, 3. The second slice is 2, 3, 4. And the third slice over here is 1, 2, 3, 4. We also need to account for the stuff greater than 3 with a length of 3. So over here, we have 1, 2, and the total sum of it is going to tell us how uh, how many slices do we actually have. So 1, 2, so far. So now we kind of move the, that bracket or the window of 3 uh, slices. So in this case, now the new elements are 3, 4, and 9. So over here, let's check the difference, and there does not exist anything because 3 and 4 is 1, but 4 and 9 is 5. So over here, we do not have an arithmetic, so it remains a 0. So now we move on. So now we have 4, 9, and 3. Again, not an arithmetic sequence. Then we have 9, 3, and 2. Not an arithmetic sequence again. Uh, let me just go through this a little bit faster. 3, 2, 9, not an arithmetic sequence. 2, 9, 9, not an arithmetic sequence. 9, 9, 14 is also not an arithmetic sequence. And now we have 9, 14, 19. So in this case, we have an arithmetic sequence because over here we have 9 plus 5 gives us 14, and 14 plus 5 gives us 19. The difference between them is the same, so we actually do have an arithmetic sequence over here. So since we do have an arithmetic sequence, we're going to go to our dynamic programming array. So we're actually currently over here. I was just keeping track. And what we're going to do is we're going to check the previous element, which in this case is 0. So that means there's nothing from a previous slice that is being accounted in the new slice over here. So over here, since it's 0, we're going to add 0 plus 1. And this now is going to have a value of 1, saying that we have one slice currently, which is an arithmetic sequence. So now let's move this window over. So now we have 14, 19, 24. Now in this case, we have uh, this also is an arithmetic sequence. So 14 plus 5 is 19, 19 plus 5 is 24. Now again, notice the difference is the same, and we know for a fact it's going to be the same if it is an arithmetic sequence, since we're using the same two elements of 14 and 19, and thus the difference has to be the same. Now, keeping that in mind, we're going to go to our dynamic programming array. We're currently over here. And in this case, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the previous element and add one from that. So now we have two. Again, let me just explain the reasoning real quickly. One of the slices is 9, 4, 14, 19. The other slice is 14, 19, 24. And the final slice is 9, 14, 19, 24. Okay. Okay, so that should be it. And now let's move on. So we move it to 192429. And in this case, this is also a uh, arithmetic series. So it has 19 plus 5, 24, 24 plus 5, 29. So in this case, again, same difference. 19 and 24 was there in the previous slice as well. So the difference has to be the same. And finally, this over here, we go to the previous element, which is 2 and 2 plus 1, which ends up giving us a value of 3. So that is it for our dynamic programming area. And hopefully you did understand how the previous slice and if there is a continuation of it, how it kind of builds up on that. And just to be clear, 1, 2, and 3, the 3 comes from the other possibilities when we have a length of 4, when we have a length of 3, and when we have a length of 5. So those are the other things we want to consider. Now, the actual thing that we end up returning is going to be the sum of all of this. So essentially, 1 plus 2, 3 plus uh, 1, 4, 4 plus 2, which is 6, and 6 plus 3, 9. And that is the correct answer. So 9 is the number of arithmetic slices we can make, which are arithmetic series. 
So hopefully you did understand this dynamic programming approach, and now let's see how this looks like in code. All right, so let's just go over the Python solution over here. So first we're gonna uh, initialize our dynamic programming array, and it's just gonna be filled with zeros, and the number of zeros, of, or the length of it, is gonna be the same length as the input array A. So now that we have our dynamic programming array, we're gonna go inside of a for loop, and over here let's just do for i in range, and we're going to start off with two. So basically what we're doing is we're going to be going from two, then three, then four, and we're going to go all the way up to the length of eight. So now the question is, how do we have a, a minimum amount of three elements? So to do that, it's pretty simple. So the current element we're on is going to be AI. The element before it is going to be AI minus one. And the element even before that is going to be AI uh, minus two, right? So that gives us a total of three elements. And that's essentially what we're trying to do. Okay, so now that we have this, uh, what we're going to do is we need to check if whatever uh, three elements we're on is a arithmetic uh, difference, sorry, uh, is an arithmetic slice or not, sorry, arithmetic sequence or not. Okay. And the way we do that is by having a if condition. And the condition is going to be, we're going to check if the difference between AI and AI minus one, so that's essentially the difference between the second and the third element. And this difference should be exactly the same as AI minus one and ai minus 2. Essentially, the difference between the first and the second element has to be the same as the difference between the second and the third element. And if that is true, that means we do have an arithmetic series. Now, in that condition, we're going to go to our dynamic programming area, and we're going to be going to the ith uh, index. And the value that's going to be here is going to be dp i minus 1, since we want to go to the previous element or the previous index in our dp array. And we're going to add one to that. So for example, if the previous one has a value of one, this one has a value of two. Since, and the reason for that is that uh, adds up to a value of three, telling us we have three different slices, okay? So that's all we have to do in this for loop. And at the very ending, we're going to return the sum of everything in this d dynamic programming area. So return sum of dp, and that should be it for our solution. So now let's look at the same thing in Java. All right, so for the Java solution here, the first thing we want to do is we want to initialize our dynamic programming array over here, and let's just call it dp, and over here we're going to have a new integer array, and the length of it is going to be the exact same length as that of our input a, so a dot length. So now that we have defined our integer area, we're also going to define our sum, and or let's just call it result, and the result over here is essentially going to be the sum of everything in our dynamic programming area, since that's essentially what we're going to end up returning. So now we're going to go inside of the for loop, and the for loop is going to be for int i, and we're going to start off at a value of 2. Now the reason we're starting off at a value of 2 is because one of the conditions for an arithmetic series is that it must have a length of 3. So starting off at 2, that gives us the index 0, 1, and 2, and each time we're going to increase this value by 1. So each time we're looking at 3 new elements. Okay, so uh, we're going to keep doing this until or uh, up to the length of the dynamic programming array or the length of a, same thing. So a dot length, and each time we're going to iterate over by 1. Okay, so we're, sorry, we're going to increment it by 1. Okay, so now one thing we want to do here is we want to check, is it actually an arithmetic series? And the way we check for that is to check for the difference. Now the difference we're checking for is we want to basically check, is the difference between the third and the second element the same as the difference between the second and the first element? So to do that, we're going to go to AI, and we're going to, sorry, uh, AI, and we're going to subtract that with AI minus 1. And we want to check if this is equal to ai minus 1 uh, subtracted by ai minus 2. So if this is equal to the same thing, that means the difference is the same. And if this is true, that means we do have an arithmetic series and we need, we need to append it in our dynamic programming area. Now to do this, we're going to be going to the index i. And what value do we give it over here? The value we give it is we go to the previous element or the previous index in the dynamic programming area, which is dpi minus 1 plus 1. So that is going to be the value of dpi. And again, we went over why this actually works. And for the reason for that is because uh, the previous slices also account for the new slice. So for example, if two consecutive slices of our arithmetic series and these slices have a length of three, that tells us we have one with the first three, 
then the last three, and we have one slice with the entire uh, four elements. So that's something we need to consider over here. And finally, we need to account for this inside of our result uh, variable, and it's just going to be result plus equal to DPI. Perfect. And one thing I actually forgot to do, sorry about that, our result, we need to initialize it with a value of zero in the beginning since the sum of the dynamic programming array is going to be zero. I forgot to do that, sorry. So this should now get accepted. All right, so now let's go over the time and space complexity. So n over here is going to be the length of array A, or in other words, the input, okay? So the time complexity is going to be big O of n, but actually I think it will be big O of n minus 2. And the 2 is because we don't look at the first two elements, and we keep moving that slider of uh, the three elements that we're looking at by one each time. So simplifying this, you just get big O of n. Now the space complexity here is going to be big O of n, because we're using a dynamic programming array with the same length of n, which is the length of the array, to store our results. So big O of n for time and space. So thanks a lot for watching, guys, and hopefully this video helped you. Thank you.